Okay, so the last uh, scientific talk of the meeting, because there are going to be some non-scientific talks as well in a little bit. So it's Sumati Rao from ICTS, and uh, she's going to talk about Majorana and parafermion zero modes, quantum hall edges with edge reconstruction. Uh, I cannot start by every, like everyone else by thanking the organizers for inviting me to this conference. So let me start directly with the topic of the uh, talk. I want to discuss whether Majorana and pyrophobion zero modes that you can get, you can construct in quantum hall edges, whether they survive edge reconstruction. So to answer this question, of course, you need to know about what Majorana modes are and their generalization to parafermions. And you also need to know about edge reconstruction in the quantum hall systems. So although there've been many uh, discussions here on quantum hall, there have been less on edge, edge reconstruction. So I'll have to introduce some of that as well. So uh, there've been already many talks on anions and fractional statistics. So let me not uh, belabor the point. I'll just say that uh, even in the previous lecture, there were mentioned of anions. These are just uh, uh, particles, quasi-particles, which have uh, an exchange statistics of eta when you take one around the other. And uh, they're not like uh, normal fermions and bosons, and you cannot have just symmetric and antisymmetric wave functions. So it's like the, uh, to study this, it's an intrinsically strongly correlated. But what I want to be discussing here are more non-abelian anions. And these are quasi-particles which actually transform as non-abelian representations of the braid group. And uh, the most important point that we, one needs to understand about these particles is that uh, they actually, multiple distinct states of the particles have the same configuration of identical particles. In other words, I can construct if these are, uh, uh, prepare a system in one ground state, then I apply a unitary transformation of them. And by braiding these non-abelian particles, I can go to another state of the system. And this is the reason that these kinds of uh, particles or the non-abelian particles are often relevant in quantum information. And uh, the, the states are like the qubits and the unitary representations are the gates that act on the qubits. But let me first come to the simplest of the uh, non-abelian particles, which is the Majorana modes. And this is like the icing model for the Majoranas is the Kitaev one-dimensional chain. This was uh, written down by Kitaev in 2001, and it's slightly different from the Kitaev model that uh, Adib just spoke about in the last lecture, which was a two-dimensional model. In this model, uh, you, it's written on a chain, and essentially you have uh, uh, fermions on a chain, which, uh, which can hop and which also have something called a pairing term. Uh, and uh, these fermions can be rewritten in terms of the same kind of Majorana fermions that he was talking about, Majorana modes. And these Majorana modes satisfy this uh, relation as uh, they basically are of the form gamma dagger is equal to gamma. That is how what distinguishes them from normal fermions. And every normal fermion can be written in terms of two Majorana modes. Equivalently, the Majorana mode can be written in terms of the CX and the CX dagger. So it's made up of a particle and it's a complex conjugate as well. So it's made up of particle and whole. So the point is that when the, the uh, you can look at this model in two limits. Uh, supposing I just uh, have mu and I set all this to zero, then when I rewrite the model in terms of the Majoranas, what you can see is that it's only the uh, Majoranas on the same site, X site, which have some kind of a coupling. And so this is kind of like one phase of the system. On the other hand, if I set uh, mu is equal to zero and T is equal to delta, then the same model can be written in terms uh, of uh, the Majoranas. And here you find essentially that the Majoranas on two nearby sites coupled to one another, and the end Majoranas are left free. So the Hamiltonian has no dependence at all on the end Majoranas. 
So if you form a non-local fermion from those two n y runners, the Hamiltonian doesn't care whether that non-local fermion is occupied or not occupied. So it forms a doubly degenerate state. So uh, because of that, uh, I have actually solved this for some particular uh, values of the mu and the t. But there's a range of parameters where this phase exists and another range of parameters is where this phase exists. So essentially the point is that this model allows you to have the Majorana modes. Uh, you, any fermion can be written in terms of Majoranas, but this allows you to move the Majoranas to two ends of the, uh, to the corners so that they, they can be separated from one another and have I, uh, individual identity. And it's the exchange of these Majoranas which lead to uh, rotations in the ground state manifold. So there's a, I just wanted to mention that there's a lot of controversy about whether Majoranas have been found or not. Uh, I mean, the, because people have tried to make Majoranas at the edge of semiconductor wires, and uh, they found that the same uh, idea of the Kitayev model can be reproduced in a model, in a realistic model where you have a semiconductor wire on top of a S wave superconductor and in the presence of a magnetic field. And uh, what they saw is that this is basically engineered just to, I won't go through the details. It's engineered to mimic the Kitaya model. And it's supposed to have Majorana modes at the two ends of the uh, wire. And this has been many experiments have to try to look for these signals starting from uh, Anindya Das's work in 2012. And, uh, uh, in recent times, there have been several retracted papers in this uh, area, but uh, probably I'd like to end by saying that this, uh, at least as of now, there is a one paper which most people do seem to think that have seen Majoranas with a high degree of probability. And uh, this is the a paper which has been put out by my, uh, the Microsoft team with the over 127 authors and 35 graduate students and so on. And it has uh, uh, passes the cut which has been proposed by Pan and Dasharma in 2020 to prove the existence of uh, the Majorana. So although not everyone may believe it, it's the, there's a now a general consensus that there is a high probability that the Majorana exists. But what I'm going to be talking about here is Majoranas in the quantum hall platform, because this is what will generalize to Majoranas and parafermions as well. So we want, that's what we want to study. There have already been several talks about the quantum Hall effect and fractional quantum Hall effect in this conference. I'll just give a very brief recap of the main results and the new feature that we need called edge reconstruction. So this is the standard quantum Hall system, which you've seen many times by now, and the quantum Hall plateaus. And uh, uh, what, uh, You've also seen in, I think, lectures by both Ganpati and uh, uh, Eduardo that uh, there's a bulk edge correspondence where uh, you can have a one edge state per Landau level that is filled. And we've also seen in these earlier lectures that the edge states are chiral. That is, if you have a, a, a quantum hall sample, uh, the edge states on one end of the sample move in one direction the edge states on the other end of the sample move in the other direction. So the properties of the quantum hall liquid that I need you to remember here is that each edge mode is a chiral, that is it has a particular direction of motion. And in integer quantum hall effect, it carries a charge of Q, E. And this charge E is replaced by some fraction in the fractional quantum hall effect. The sum of the charge times the chirality is the Hall conductance of all the edge modes. And this is a quantized topologically protected property of the bulk measured by the Hall conductance. So this is something that we have to keep in mind when you think of edge reconstruction, you cannot uh, change this. For abelian quantum Hall states, it's also true that the sum of the chiralities of the mode is the thermal Hall conductance which is also something which is measured and which is quantized. So you can't uh, change that either. But subject to these two constraints, anything can happen. You can 
get any number of new modes. You can get changes in their charges, in their chiralities. And these things depend on details of the edge potential. It depends on how smooth the edge potential is, details of interactions, disorder, and finding edge potential, et cetera. So uh, I, uh, so the simplest example of edge reconstruction is that if the edge potential is very smooth, then what happens is that the elect electrons, the electron density essentially tries to mimic this as it comes around. And it's energetically favorable for it to deposit uh, away from the edge state uh, so that you have now three chiral edges that you can think of one edge going this way, one edge going this way, and one. these are also going in opposite directions. I'll come to this in more detail. So I'm just mentioning this as an example of an edge reconstruction. So now we want to understand how can quantum Hall systems be used to engineer Majorana and pyrofermion modes. What I will, uh, we have here is you have a two quantum Hall liquids with opposite spins, and this can be engineered by G factors and uh, by opposite G factors and by strain and things like that. And then what you do is you, uh, uh, you gap them out by putting superconductors or ferromagnetism on top of it. And uh, so that under the, the superconductor and ferromagnet, the, uh, the electron gets gapped out. And because of the boundary conditions, what happens is that if an electron comes out from here, it gets reflected at the ferromagnet. Then, but when it comes back to the superconductor, it gets reflected as a whole because uh, that's the Adri process. The electron comes into the superconductor and is uh, reflected back as a whole because the charge 2E can go into the superconductor. And that hole can get reflected back. So essentially the point is that due to the boundary conditions, there are two cycles you need to get back to the original configuration. This is the Andri bound state, and this is responsible for, in some sense, for the Majorana being formed over here. I'm using this as a simplified uh, picture to say what are parafermions. The parafermions, you can think of them equivalently as nu is equal to one third fractional quantum Hall effects with opposite spins. And again, the same picture where you gap out the quasi-particles by a superconductor or a ferromagnet. But here, what happens is that even when you think of this kind of uh, bound state being formed between the superconductor and ferromagnet, I've actually exaggerated the domain wall between the superconductor and the ferromagnet. Uh, because um, the, the mass term is actually psi r dagger psi l or something like that, and the superconductor also takes away two electrons, you always have, you're left out with some uh, there's some kind of a dipole being formed at the, each of these things. And here what you find is that you need to actually go through six, for nu is equal to one third, you need to go through six cycles to come back to the original. And for the nu is equal to one by m, it's basically two m cycles. So these are these, whatever is bound in this region is something like the Andri bound state and Majorana, I'm calling this a parafermion. Uh, actually, this is more correctly done by using bosonization and where you can see that the zero mode is bound at a domain wall between the region which is gapped by a pairing and which is gapped by an insulator. And then it's these, uh, when we take these deltas and the m's to infinity, make them very large, then it's the, the these uh, factors of the cosines get pinned to the minima, and that is what causes this, what I'm trying to show here pictorially. And uh, okay, you get this zero mode, but that's what I've already said pictorially, but that's, I don't want to go to the bosonization. So what can be measured? I mean, we, what we want to measure here is the Majorana or the pyrophoria Josephson effect. And to do that, we remove the insulator between the two sub superconductors. And we want to see how the degeneracy of the zero modes affects the Josephson current. So just to remind you, the standard Josephson effect for normal superconductors, you know that essentially with one way you can think about them is that the, the, the Cooper pairs are the ones which are uh, jumping across the superconductor and that gives rise to an HC by 2E effect. There is a, the energy is proportional to the cosine of the 
uh, phase difference between the two superconductors and the current is proportional to the uh, derivative of the energy and hence proportional to sine phi. And this is what I plotted over here, the energy and the sine phi as a, it's periodic in two pi. And as many of you pr probably know, for topological superconductors with Majoranas, you can, uh, you find explicitly, you can, uh, at, at one level, you can think that there are Majorana uh, modes. So there are, there are the 2E hopping is now changed by the E hopping. That's the easy way of saying it. So that the um, current periodicity increases to four pi. Or correctly, it's a, there is a, the term that is relevant is this uh, IT gamma one gamma two, which is the parity operator. And uh, for a fixed parity, as long as you cannot change the parity, you can see that the, the energy is now proportional to phi by two, and the current is proportional to sine phi by two. And then for a given fixed parity, and if you do not allow for parity changes, the, there is a four pi Josephson effect. And uh, it's now easy to see that if you, instead of that, a very similar argument using the Bosonius language will give rise to two m pi periodicity because it effectively tra transports charge E by M between the superconductors. And in, as long as the uh, parity, the Z parity of the parafermions is fixed, you can only get, uh, you will get a 12 pi periodicity. Now, what our recent work, and this is in collaboration with Kishore Ayer, who is the dis disembodied voice you often hear asking questions and uh, the Amulya and uh, Saurin who are here around. And what we wanted to ask is whether edge reconstruction can change any of these results. And so the essential idea is that now we go back to nu is equal to one and we bring in two nu is equal to one quantum Hall fluids. And then we wanted to see uh, whether the, uh, we gap them out again by superconductivity and ferromagnetism and then remove the ferromagnetism. I'll put in the ferromagnetism only to count the number of modes. And we want to see the effect of reef construction. So uh, let me first say, what is the picture when you have, uh, we start, when we start with the new is one quantum hall bulk, Edge reconstruction, it has uh, been shown by Shamon and Well, and more recently also more work has been done by Udit, uh, Moshe Goldstein and Yuval, who showed that uh, you can have this nu is equal to one third being deposited away from, from the nu is equal to one bulk. And what this means is that you're looking at this picture, you can see that there's a nu is equal to one chiral edge channel, and then there are two counter propagating one third channels. And, uh, it, but edge renormalization, as is shown in the paper, this paper, uh, uh, changes it to, uh, hybridizes the two inner modes into a one-third chiral and a two-third chiral, both of which are co-propagating, and a neutral mode going in the opposite direction. As I said, edge reconstruction only has some rules that it has to follow. It has to give you the correct topological, the Hall conductance, and it has to give you the correct uh, thermal hall conductance. And within that, they, it can be changed. And that depends on details, which has been worked out. So for what we need to do, I can ignore the neutral mode, which does not contribute to the Josephson current. So now we only have two co-propagating chiral modes which charge two third and one third quasiparticles at each edge. Now what you see is that there are several different kinds of electron operators, which are possible. You can have, a, a, an electron which is created on both these edges. Uh, uh, I've used the bosonized language for the one third edge and the two third edge, which I'm calling phi one and phi two. You can have only on the one third edge, which I call the phi one, and on the two third edge, which is calling three by two phi phi two. The point is that now, again, using bosonized language, you can see that. Uh, all the electrons can be gapped out by proximity induced superconductivity of ferromagnetism, leading to the same kind of uh, thing that uh, we had earlier, that you will have uh, uh, either parafermions or uh, Majorana modes trapped in these regions, in these domain wall regions. 
and uh, uh, okay, I, we used actually a kind of closed geometry because we wanted to count, count the number of modes, but essentially the, the same point. I'm only interested in the para. You can see is that the, there are two independent modes trapped at each domain wall corresponding to Andreev reflections of psi is minus i phi 1 plus phi 2 and psi is 3 i phi 1. That is the two different kinds of electrons uh, that I talked about three different kinds of electrons. Uh, in Two of them is what I've written over here. It turns out that the uh, constraints on the uh, cosines already take care of the third one and you don't need to put it independently. At a less technical level, I can say that the third fermion, uh, you find that is of the form 3i by 2 phi. So that if you, uh, it, it is something which if you go around even once, it already gives you a 2e charge. So it doesn't lead to Majorana fermions. Whereas these two uh, fermions do lead to Majorana fermions. So the ground state manifold now holds four states which decouple into two different sectors, independent sectors, as opposed to the unreconstructed case, which had only a ground state manifold of two. So, okay, at a pictorial level, I can just say that in the unreconstructed, we just had an electron which could hop between these two. And this was, this was what led to the four pi Josephson effect. Here now I can have uh, either the combined electron from both the edges, jumping in and giving rise to a four pi effect or an electron purely from the E by three um, uh, wire giving rise to the uh, uh, four pi Josephson effect once I remove the ferromagnet so that the zero modes hybrid. So this is the main point that I want to do that uh, which I've already said that the unreconstructed wire on a single electron can be transported and for the reconstructed, it can be transported in two ways. The thing is, the point I want to emphasize is that the uh, consistency over here does not allow any other kind of, it doesn't allow the one third, the uh, cosines are such that the numbers which are uh, fixed on these two, uh, the superconductor and the M widget, does not allow for anything else. It only allows for these. So the results are that the many body spectrum continues to have four pi periodicity and not 12 pi. This was not obvious to us when we started because the, we did have a one third uh, edge reconstruction as well. So we could have expected that perhaps there could be 12 pi or anything between four pi and 12 pi. But as it happens, it only has the four pi periodicity. So finally, then if that is true, how do we know that there is, there has been edge reconstruction? Uh, the reconstruction can be seen if the velocities of the reconstructed fields are different as they would be in, the, in a realistic system in the amplitudes of the oscillation. So you, the, on the left, I have the uh, energies. On the right, I have the currents. And you can see that uh, if the amplitude, the velocities of the two modes are the same, then there is no distinction between what you would get for an unreconstructed uh, case and the reconstructed case. But if the velocities are different, then the amplitudes of the uh, odd and even parities of the are different. And in which case you can see the change in the uh, Josephson curve. So the, that's the main point. We investigated whether the formation of Majorana modes in the quantum hall system and the four pi Josephson effect was robust to edge reconstruction. And our answer is that yes, it is robust. And uh, this is easily extendable. Our work is easily extendable to the case where we have a one third edge and Z6 paraphobians to start with. And we can see whether that is robust as well. So to summarize, the ground state manifold of the edge reconstructed new is equal to one system is fourfold degenerate in contrast to the unreconstructed twofold degenerate manifold. But the four pi Josephson effect is uh, robust to edge reconstruction. 
This is what we have. This is exactly 25 minutes. Excellent. Questions? Anybody other than you all? <laughs> Actually, I have only two questions this time. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the first one is uh, you show the structure of uh, interfacing reconstructed uh, modes. Um, uh, some of them talk to each other, of course, uh, when you form these uh, power fermions. And the question, I mean, there, there are tunnelings. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So uh, is the picture you show sensitive to who exactly talks with whom? Uh, what kind of tunnelings? What kind of uh, In uh, interactions do you allow? Before reconstruction or with reconstruction? Uh, you you have reconstruction, so you have uh, you showed the uh, six modes in this interface, and now I can imagine that uh, the this six modes were without. Uh, uh, you, you showed some uh, picture with six. Oh yeah, I mean that, okay, fine, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this was just a, I, this was just a name drawing. I just uh, yes to start with uh, so this will get reconstructed into four modes. Yes, but I'll have four modes. No, no, but no, this, I, I'm asking whether in the six modes. Yeah. Uh, now you want to uh, uh, allow some of them to interact with some, and uh, some of them to have uh, uh, tunneling uh, yeah. among themselves. So, so there are. A whole zoo of uh, possibilities. A whole zoo of possibility. We have taken the possibility you people have uh, uh, written, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because we said that naively it is unrenewable, and we have six of them. But we essentially took the one that you have in, uh, I mean, in your paper with Udit, and we reconstructed them because we assume that the, the it's a short length, so it should be much smaller than the equilibrium length. So we assume that you would only have the talking will be such. After finishing talking, you will have two, the two-third chiral and the one-third chiral, and we've ignored the back, backward propagating neutral. So we've taken only this one. There could be other possibilities which you've not taken. Okay. And the, the second question is, uh, you, you said that uh, uh, if a, a neutral mode or neutral modes are generated, you ignore them completely. But we know that when you have a intermode uh, tunneling, uh, uh, sometimes you need to uh, uh, create or to annihilate a, uh, a neutral on, and that uh, affects in a very substantial way the commutation relations. So, is it really allowed to ignore uh, this altogether? I mean, the reason, of course, is that we've said that the domain wall region is very short. So, yes, I mean, if, if it can be ignored, it is correct. If it really cannot be ignored, we have to include. Uh, no, I would see first of all because superconductors are involved. The general argument is that um, if there are not too many fluctuations, the neutral mode doesn't matter in this argument right? because they're a superconductor. Superconductor cannot really affect the neutral mode. That's a general argument, right? So now, specific argument uh, it affects the commutation relations or something he's asking. So yeah, that is something we have not taken into account. Because it's short enough not to be taken taken into account. Uh, just to add uh, to this, uh, I think one important point is that the operators we are using do not uh, involve the neutral mode. Identify yourself. Uh, sorry, I'm Kishore uh, online. He's one of the co-authors. He's a, he's online. He's the disembodied voice. Yes, continue, Kishore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just that the operators we are using in this work they do not uh, involve neutral modes. These are the. Uh, yeah, that is true. The what we are using doesn't involve it. But what he's asking is more that if, if it can affect the commutation relations, then we have to be more careful. I don't know about that. This thing. Hey, questions from. Maybe I just finished the comment. Not, I think uh, it's at two level. One thing is that you can construct new electron operators which involve the neutral mode, which we have not. Yeah. We've not taken them into account because we believe they don't matter. The other thing is really fluctuations, which Yuval is asking. That is also not, not something on board, assuming that the junction is short enough. Questions, other questions? 
Okay, if not, let's thank Sumati.